Okay, let's talk about exponents. Let's start with something like 2x squared times 2x cubed. So if you have parentheses and an exponent, you're going to multiply. So let's do that first. And you have to kind of think, okay, I'm going to square the 2 and the x. So you're going to get 4x squared because it's like this has a 1 times 2. But then we still have this 2x to the third outside of it. So in order to take care of this, we're going to, you deal with the um, coefficients first, so you do 4 times 2, 8. And then when you're multiplying exponents like this, so you get, it would look like this really. You just, since there's no parentheses, there's no powers involved, uh, you're not raising the x to a power, you're just multiplying it by another x that's to a power. It's like you're adding them. Because really what this is saying is I have an 8 and 2 x's, and then I have 3 more x's. So how many x's do I have total? I have five, so it's like adding them, okay? So that would be how you solve that one. Um, what else is good? Uh, remember that when, if you have, let's say, x to the third raised to the third times two x to the negative one, so let's deal with these in parts. So, whoop. so again, if we have an x to the, if we have something to an exponent, we raise that to another exponent, then we're going to multiply these. So this becomes x to the ninth. And then over here we have times 2x to the negative 1. That negative makes it a fraction. That automatically says, whoop, I'm going to make this actually 1 over 2x. And then we still have x to the ninth here. And then remember, everything is just automatically over 1, so we can make it look like this. And if we multiply across, we get x to the ninth over 2x. And if we are looking at it like this, we can say, and really we could have done this over here, where we could have said, okay, really, if we're multiplying this x times that x, we're adding them, so 9 plus negative 1, you'd get, um, oh, that 2 doesn't go down there, does it? That 2 is up here. So because the 2 is not in parentheses, it stays on the top. Oop. Uh, so if we'd done it from this step, and we had just said, okay, x to the ninth times 2 to the x to the negative 1, we could have just said, oh, that's 2, um, x to the ninth times x to the negative 1, and you just add them. So 9 plus negative 1, you get 2x to the eighth. And if you look at it here, it's the same thing. So if you move this down to the bottom, which is what that negative denotes, you'd say, okay, well, I can simplify. I can cross out this x and one of these and make that an 8. You get 2x to the eighth. So that got a little weird, so let's try another one just like it. Let's do... Let's do one that gets a little crazy. Well, it's not really crazy, crazy. It's going to look like a fraction, but don't freak out. 3x squared y squared divided by 2x to the negative 1 times 4yx squared. All right, so how can we simplify this? So again, the first thing you want to do is move all of your... The first thing I like to do is... Um, there are several things you could do here. I like to deal with the coefficients first, so nothing happens to the 3, and the 2 and the 4 multiply, and you get an 8. Cool. So now, what do we do with our x's? So on top, we just have an x squared, nothing else, and we have a y squared. On the bottom, we have x to the negative 1, and then x to the 2. So I can deal with this already and add these up. Okay, so x to the negative 1 times x to the squared is x to the 2 minus 1, or just x and then I have a y. Cool. So now I can just divide. So since I have two x's up here and one here, I can cancel one of those and make that a one. And again, I have a y and two y's up here. I can make that go away. So this becomes 3xy over 8. And that's the answer to that. Let's look at negatives, negative exponents a little bit more. We have x to the negative 2, x to the negative 3. And then let's just throw in a so, to the fourth of there. So what's happening here? So we can deal, remember when we deal with, um, oh, what is it called, PEMDAS? When we do parentheses, exponents, division, multiplication, blah, blah, blah. Um, we deal with parentheses, whatever's in the parentheses first. So x to the negative 2 times x to the negative 3 is x to the negative 5. And then we have a 4 here. So now since it's being raised to that power, it's on the outside of parentheses, we're going to multiply. You end up with x to the negative 20. And because it's a negative, it's a negative exponent, that automatically means it goes to the bottom. So it's 1 over x to the 20. And that gets rid of that negative. So why don't you try this one? x to the negative third raised to the fourth times x to the fourth 
divided by 2x to the negative third. So pause it, try it, and then come back and check your work. So you should have first done, what can we do first? We could, there's several things you could do first. You could cancel the 3 and the 4 first. Um, when, you, it's tricky though when you do that. Okay, so let's do it this way. So we're going to deal with this first. So we have x to the negative 3 times 4. That's x to the negative 12th. And then we have this x to the 4th hanging out next to it. And then underneath is 2x to the negative 3. So x to the negative 12th times x to the 4th. We just add these. So you end up with x to the negative 8th. And then we have 2x to the negative third on the bottom. So when you have an exponent over an exponent, you're going to subtract. But right now, these negatives are freaking me out, and I don't like them. So I'm just going to put them where they really want to be. So this negative says that whatever this is being raised to, boop, so the x being raised to the negative eighth needs to go on the bottom, needs to flip. And this negative says, well, I'm already on the bottom, so I need to flip to the top. Notice that the 2, though, doesn't have any negative exponents, so it doesn't change. Okay, so this wants to flip, and the x to the negative eighth is going to go on the bottom, and it becomes x to the eighth. The x to the negative third is going to go on the top, and becomes three, and the two stays on the bottom. So we still can simplify, because I have three x's on top and eight x's on bottom, so then I just subtract. So then, because remember when you multiply, like here, we added them, so when you're dividing, you subtract. So I have three x's on top, eight x's on bottom, so I can cancel three of these with three of those, and you're left with five you get 1 over 2x to the fifth. Okay, so this one looks a little more nasty, so take a second to write it down so you can kind of go with me on it. So let's see. So first of all, I've got two of these fractions, and I know fractions are horrible, but really they're just keeping things organized for you. And then we have a division sign, so we're dividing. And remember, the thing that I always kept trying to say that I kept messing up and saying, uh, calling a kick flip, um, the stay switch flip when you're dealing with dividing a fraction by another fraction. What that means is this is going to stay as it is, we're going to change that sign to a multiplication sign, and then we're going to flip this fraction completely to, to deal with it. So let's deal with these part by part. So if I'm going to deal with this one, well, no, let's, let's reorganize first. So this one stays. So remember, it's stay, switch, flip, which reminds me of um, uh, skateboards all the time. Okay, so let's keep this. We're not going to do anything else to it yet. Squared. 3x cubed y to the fourth z squared. Make sure I did everything right. And then we're going to switch that sign to multiplication. And then we're going to flip this over. So y squared goes on top, x to the negative fourth on bottom, and z squared on bottom. Awesome. So now we can deal with these again. So now I'm going to foil out. So there's nothing in here I can do. So if you want to do parentheses first, there's nothing there. But I can foil out this 3. It's going to go to three different things. The thing that people most often do is forget that the uh, coefficient has to be raised to that exponent also. They'll just leave it as a 2 often and make sure you don't do that. So 2 cubed is 8. x um, to the third cubed, since we're raising it to a power, we're multiplying. x to the ninth. z squared cubed, we're multiplying. z to the sixth. Cool. And then I have x cubed, y to the fourth z squared times y squared oh look let's go ahead and deal with this so this is on the this is a negative sign which means it wants to flip to the other side so i'm going to put that there x to the fourth and then z uh, cubed stays there so now it still looks gross but we can simplify stuff so there's three x's here there's nine up there i can go ahead and get rid of this and make that a six there's, um, we'll deal with this first. We have two z's here. We have six z's there. I can subtract and make that a four. Let's do that first. So we get, that becomes eight x to the six, z to the fourth over y to the fourth times x to the fourth, y squared, z cubed. So now, one thing you can do if you're multi just multiplying stuff and there's no addition, you can, if you have multiplication like this, you can just extend your line. Oh, uh, look at that. So this, because really we're saying we're just multiplying it like that. So now we have, uh, again, the 8 can't do anything. Let's see what our x's are doing. So we need to add these two x's. So x to the 6th times x to the 4th is going to be x to the 10th. Uh, there's no more z's, so we're good. Well, okay, we can deal with these two z's. There's 4 on top, 3 on bottom, so that goes away, and this becomes a 1. Z. So we dealt with the x's. The y's, we have 2 on top, 4 on bottom. So that means we, when we subtract, we're left with two of these on the bottom. And there you go.
That is the final answer to this one. Probably the nastiest kind of exponent you'll see. So remember that logs are just a way to describe exponents in a different way. So if we have log, let's see, if we have six squared, we know that equals 36. We can describe this as a log by dropping that base and then putting a 36 and then that. Uh, remember what this means is that you have, let me get a different marker. How about orange? So that means when we undo this log, that means six raised to the two equals 36, which is what we have here. Six raised to the two equals 32. So six squared equals, sorry, 36, not 32. Uh, so that's how you undo it. I just have to think about this when I'm undoing what, a log. Like if we have, uh, let's start with the log looking this, uh, well, let's practice again. Log up to the two, log base 289 of 17 equals one half. What the what does that mean? Let's flip this around. Um, so this is just a true statement because there's no um, exponents in it at all. And we can see that if we undo this, if we say, okay, this raised to that power is going to equal this. So 289 to the 1 half equals 17. So what does this fraction mean? So the fraction is just how we describe square roots. Instead of being raised to the 2, we're rooting it by 2, if that makes sense. So this becomes the square root because there's a 2 there that we just ignore. And it's the square root of 289 equals 17. So that becomes a, a different way to present that true statement. All right, so let's start solving some exp or some log uh, formulas, and then we'll relate it back to exponents in a second. What if I have log base 3 of 1 over 243 equals x, and I ask you to solve for x? Or even if I just, we were given log base 3 of 243, and it said solve this log, you just set it equal to x, and then you're solving for x. So again, we're going to take, we're going to undo this log by raising 3 to the x and setting that equal to 1 over 243. So 3 to the x equals 1 over 243. Um, and there's a couple ways you can do this. The fancy technical way you do it is you say, I need to get these bases to be equal to each other. Because right now, 3 to the x, this is prime. We can't undo 3 anymore. We can undo this 1 over 243 by first saying, okay, really, this is 243 raised to the negative 1. So now I need to see I need to make this base 3, which means somewhere in here, hopefully, if this is a nice happy problem, um, we can, there's a 3 raised to something that gives us 243. So let's, what, uh, the way, you, there's a couple ways you can do it on the calculator. You can say if you don't have all your logs memorized, because, no, well, you might eventually by accident. Um, I know I never memorize them because I have a calculator. All right, so uh, we can, you can do two different things. You can say 243 raised to the 1 over what, so like let's just put in a 6 and say that's the 6th root of 243. Is that 3? It is not 3, so that does me no good. So 243 raised to the 1 over the 5th root is 3. There we go. Um, you could also do it by going the other way and saying 3 raised to the what gives me 243. Let's say I'm just practicing and I'm saying oh, 3 to the 4th, oh that's only 81. 3 to the 5th is 243. So basically, you're kind of guessing and checking, but um, in a rational and um, learned way. I don't know. Okay, so, but basically what I'm saying is 3 to the x equals uh, 3, we found out, was 3 to the 5th. And then don't forget there's that negative 1 there still. Negative 1. All right. So that's, we're almost there. So remember, what we're doing is we're trying to solve for x. So since these bases are exactly the same, I can basically ignore them. So x, we can set the x ones equal to each other. x equals negative 5. Boom. And that's your answer for that. So let's do another one of those. How about... Uh, ooh, interesting. Okay, so let's look at this one. Uh, again, we're going to simplify this by saying 64 raised to the x equals 4, and then solve for x. So 64 raised to the x equals 4. So this is, again, where you can say, okay, how can I change this to this 64 to be a 4? And then we're going to solve for um, x. And you can kind of, there's no exponent here right now. And so if there's no exponent, you can remember that anything raised to the 1 
is itself. Anything raised to the zero is one. Like if I have four to the zero, that equals one. So four to the one equals four. There's some long proof to figure that out, but just know this is an easy thing to memorize. So we're gonna keep it this way first. All right, cool. So then we have to say, okay, 64, what can I make turn 64 in that it actually makes it a base um, with a base of four, okay? So that didn't make sense. So, okay, so 64 raised to the, oh, uh, well, the square root is only gonna give us eight, so that's no good. 64 raised to the cube root, or the cube root of 64 is four. So four, you can also go the other way. So six, uh, four raised to the third is 64. So we can replace that 64 with four to the third, and then don't forget there's an X, okay? Because really you're saying, okay, this is exactly the same thing as 64, so I can replace that 64 with four to the third, and then just multiply those. So then you end up with four to the third X equals four to the one. So three X equals one, X is one third. Boom. There you go. Okay, don't forget there's um, one, so let's talk about some properties of logs. So if you have five raised to the log base five of anything, let's just say 17. If you have five and then a log raised to the log base of that same thing, these two things cancel out and this goes down. Okay, and so then the answer is just, really, that's just 17. So you could have, you know, um, 150 to 175 raised to the log base 175 of Q. And then this just simplifies down to Q. That's it. So these things will cancel out. But they have to be, this base has to be the same as that base. And that would get you that. There's another log rule. So if you have, um, just the multiplication and division rules we've talked about. If you have log, uh, we'll just say base 10. Remember, you don't have to write base 10. You can just put log and it'll be the same thing. If you have log base 10 of 2 plus log base 10 of 3, and you're gonna say that equals X, and you want to figure out um, what this is. Anytime you're adding logs of the same base, you multiply them. So we're gonna uh, combine them into multiplication. So log base 10 of two times three equals X, and this may not actually solve anything, but we'll see. So then this becomes, yeah, this isn't gonna come out to anything. 10 to the X equals six. 10 to the x equals 6. Now, I can't solve this any further because there's no base to get these together, but I just want to show you um, if you have, um, if you're adding two logs that are the same, you are really multiplying them. If you're dividing them, or sorry, if you're subtracting them, so if this had been log base 3 of 4 minus log base 3 of 2 equals x, uh, yeah, let's make it, yeah, we're just gonna make it X. This isn't gonna work either, that's okay. We d combine these by saying log base three of four divided by two equals X. So then that just becomes log base three of two equals X. And then you say three, when we simplify this further, three to the X equals two. Three to the X equals two, which again, we can't simplify any further and that's fine. Really, if we wanted to solve this kind of problem, we do what's called the change of base formula. So let's do that over here. And remember the change of base formula is where you say I'm gonna do log two of log three um, is going to equal whatever I'm looking for, whatever that equal sign was. So that changes um, this into something I can actually put in my calculator. Okay, so log of two, remember this is, um, uh, your log, your calculator is in log base three automatically, so x is 0.63 in this. And if you wanted to go back and check, you could say three raised to that answer. Assuming I did it right, up oh, there it is. It's the same thing. It's two. So if you end up where, so if we go back and do this one, we can say, all right, if I want to change this, I'd have to do it from up here, and I'd get log base six of log base ten equals x. So log six over log ten. So log six divided by log 10 is that. So X is 0 0.778 here. 778, excellent. You might also see occasions where you have log base three 
um, x equals negative 2. So I've moved that exponent, or sorry, not that exponent, I've moved that um, variable inside the log equation, which is fine because now I can actually solve uh, for it in an easier way. We do the same thing where we say 3 raised to the negative 2 equals x. So what does that equal? So 3 to the negative 2 equals x. That negative means we flip it, boop, 3 squared equals x. So x is 1 ninth. And that's all you do to undo those problems. Pretty easy. You, the only time I've ever seen these in word problems on math tests um, at this level is in pH problems because uh, pH is, uh, when we're talking about pH, we're talking about the concentration of hydrogen or hydronium ions in a solution. And that's given as uh, a log base equation. Um, the only kind of thing I've ever seen, so if you, so the pH equation is pH is negative log concentration of hydrogen. So if you're told that you have, and this is 10, um, you, this might be given as x, whatever the variable is, that's fine. So pH log, negative log, x, oh, sorry, 10 of x, and x is your concentration of hydrogen. Boop, same thing. So it might tell you if you have a concentration of where, let's say you know your, your hydronium or hydrogen is 100, Okay, so you know x is 100, what's your pH? So you just plug it in, negative log base 10 of, now that's 100, and then I'm solving for pH, so really this becomes my variable, okay? This might, this gets confusing because this x is here, that's why I don't like to use the x because we're solving for pH. Um, I like to use this equation, but sometimes in math they use this one because they don't talk to science people. So now I can solve this and I can say, all right, 10 to the, uh, well, let's do it this way. Um, first of all, we can actually just put this in the calculator. So because this is log base 10, we're going to deal, we'll deal with that negative sign in a second. Um, uh, we could deal, yeah, we'll deal with that. Okay, so that's log, you can just put in your calculator as log 100, boop, is 2. So you can even put it in as negative log 100, it's negative 2. So there you go. So then your pH is just um, uh, negative 2, the pH is 2, so that's weird yeah yeah it should be it it shouldn't be negative so this actually should negate the negative is what's happening here your cat this is a case where your calculator is not doing what you want it to do um because really what this is saying is 10 to 10 raised to the x equals 100 so what does that negative do so whenever we have a, something being multiplied by the log really that goes here Okay, um, so that means originally this is 100 raised to the negative 1. Okay, um, so then we could say, so 10 to the x equals 100 is just 10 squared. So if it's 10 squared to the negative 1, uh, yeah, I don't know why that negative is still there. There's a place I'm missing, but that's okay. Basically, your answer is uh, x is 2, the pH of the solution is 2. Okay, let's real quick just solve a couple more log equations. If you have 2 log base 7 of negative 2x equals 0, what do you do? And I think, yeah, let's try this first. Okay, so we have some unpacking to do. So right now we have, so this 2 needs to, the where it came from originally was the thing that the log is being, the uh, it's, it's in the log was originally squared. So we need to put that 2 back before we do anything. So this is now log 7 of negative 2x squared equals 0. And now we can do our log thing where we say, okay, 7 raised to the 0 is going to equal this. Okay, so 7 raised to the 0, and we can go ahead and square this. So negative 2 squared is 4, and then x squared is just x squared. Cool. So now we have 7 to the 0, that's just 1, equals 4x squared. Divide both sides by 4. 1 fourth equals x squared. Take the square root of either one, plus or minus 1 half equals x. And that's it. So another one's sort of similar. Negative 6 log base 3 of x minus 3 gives negative 24. Um, yeah, okay, so there is something you could do instead of just... We can, yeah, can we cheat a little bit? Let's let's see if we can cheat a little bit. How about we just divide both sides by negative 6 first? 
that is totally legit because really you're just saying I'm doing six times this whole giant thing. I could put that six here, right? Because really this negative six came from being, um, it was a power, an exponent on this whole thing. But then once you draw it, and you can see I actually started doing this before and realized I was doing it in a complicated and horrible way. Um, because once you bring it out, you end up with, if you were to do it that way, you end up with... Uh, 3 raised to the negative 24 equals x minus 3 to the 6th. And that's kind of gross and horrible. And um, an easier thing to deal with is to actually instead just divide both sides by negative 6 first. So those go away. And you end up with log base 3 of x minus 3 equals 4. Because negative 24 divided by 6 is just 4. And now we can do our thing. And this cannot be separated out. At first I was thinking we could, it's... Um, we divide it, but since it's already in one, it's packaged in one unit with one log, it can't be separated out. If it had been log base 3x minus log base 3, 3, negative 3, or 3, we could have divided it, but it's it's not. It's like we, we have to deal with it like this. So we have 3 raised to the 4, 3 raised to the 4 equals x minus 3. Oops, I'm messing things up. Right, so x minus 3. Okay, so I can go ahead and say, so 3 to the 4th, which we figured out earlier, was 81, equals x minus 3. Okay, cool. So nothing, there's no exponents anymore. I don't have to do anything weird. I can just say, cool, I'm going to add 3 to both sides. x equals 84. And that's the answer to that problem. So don't think just because there's an exponent, or sorry, there's a... Um, uh, coefficient out front you have to pull it to the uh, back up here that is where it came from originally and you could if you wanted to like we did with this problem um, but if you can't just divide both sides by 2 you get the same answer so we had done that here and divided both sides by 2 we would have gotten 7 raised to the 0 equals 2x negative 2x uh, and then we negative 2 well we would have gotten uh, a bad answer because you can't have log of it gets complicated but in this case it's a lot easier to just go ahead and divide both sides since this thing is being subtracted um, and you get a nice happy answer of negative or positive 84 and that's really as complicated as you need to go into logs for right now um, I think this is complicated enough